Hello and welcome to Engineering Simple. In this video, I'll talk about why do we increase the test frequency when we're doing induced voltage tests. So, induced voltage test is a very common uh, test performed on transformers and other equipment, but in this particular video, I'm talking about transformers at higher than the rated voltage. So by IEEE, so for IEEE designs, if you have a distribution or a class one transformer, the voltage is two times the rated voltage, so it's twice. For class two transformers, it's 1.58 times the rated voltage for the one hour test. And we'll see in other videos, it's, uh, for one minute or a few seconds, it can be uh, applied. Time, the voltage can be 1.8 times the rated voltage. <clears throat> but the the point that I'm trying to drive here is that the induced voltage test is applied at a voltage at more than the rated voltage. So the induced voltage test perform, also performed at higher frequency. And the reason being is to, so to avoid coarse saturation. And we'll see an, uh, an example kind of like why we increase the frequency. Typically the frequency between 180 Hertz and 400 Hertz. And one thing to keep in mind, silicon steel, you know, material saturates around 2.02 Tesla. So that's really kind of the limiting limitation for the core core steel. So here's the equation that kind of relates the flux density, the RMS voltage, number of turns, frequency, and so on and so forth. So B is equal to VRMS divided by 4.44 times A. A is the cross-section area of the core and is the number of turns of the winding to which the voltage is applied. F is the frequency. So B is in Tesla. VRMS is the RMS test voltage. Okay, so here's an example. So let's assume, like, uh, if, the, if you apply the voltage of 20 kV line to neutral and the frequency is 60 hertz, the calculated, the calculated uh, flux density is 1.65 Tesla. Now, if you increase the voltage, like I was saying here for distribution and class one, you apply two times the rated voltage. So if you increase the voltage to twice the rated voltage, so two times 20 kV is 40 kV. So the new flux density B2 is, is two times B1 because the only thing I changed is VRMS. So I multiply two times, and obviously this here is B1. So two times B1. So it's 3.3 .3 Tesla. Silicon steel saturates around 2.02 Tesla. That means this here will cause the core to saturate and cause problems, basically overheating and other things. So assuming the other variables are the same, which means the cross-section area, the number of turns are the same, and the frequency. So all the only thing in this hypothetical example, the only thing that I changed from B1 to B2 is the voltage. Now, in, additional, in addition to the voltage, let's change the frequency from, you know, from 60 hertz basically to 240 hertz. So F3, so I call it F3 is equal to 240 hertz, which is four times F1, which is F1 is 60. So I change the voltage, 
that means two times the V, uh, V1, and I change the frequency, so now it's four, four times the uh, F1. So B3, the new flux density is two divided by four times B1, two, by, two divided by four times 1.65. So you see, even if I double the voltage, even if I double, I double, I double the voltage, the flux density was very low because I also in because I increased the frequency. So the frequency increase can kind of compensate it for the voltage increase. So 0.825 Tesla is way less than 2.02 uh, Tesla. So that's one of the reasons why during the induced voltage test, the frequency is increased because the voltage is increased. And since the flux density is kind of proportional, so this means proportional to volts per turn, that means if you increase the voltage, you must increase the number of turns to avoid saturation. or you must increase the volts per hertz or frequency, which because the number of turns are kind of fixed, you can't change them unless you redesign. But since I'm just kind of making the changes during the test, I increase the voltage. That means I have to increase frequency. So that's why frequency is increased during uh, the induced voltage test. So that was it for this video. Hopefully you find it useful and kind of give you the reason why the frequency is increased during the induced voltage test. Thank you and have a great day.